The Sign of the Wyvern Those born under this sign are wanderers and risk-takers. They're natural-born survivors and good at riding horses. Their birthstone is sapphire, the gem that protects travelers from harm. There's even an artifact called the Wyvern's Die, a die with 12 faces, each inscribed with a symbol of the zodiac. The die can be rolled once per day to influence the roller's fortune that day. The Sign of the Dragon Those born under this sign are magnificent and conscious of their unique destinies. They're born appraisers and good at listening. Their birthstone is garnet, the gemstone of celebrity and fame. Lily's sure that she's a dragon, but will be polite and hear the rest of the Wheel of Stars anyway. There's even an artifact called the Cloak of the Dragon, crafted from the skin of a blue dragon like a Bazigal. It improves the wearer's charisma and gives them a regal bearing that makes them an ideal leader. The Sign of the Unicorn Those born under this sign are aggressive and straightforward. They're natural-born climbers and good at jumping. Their birthstone is topaz, the stone that magnifies the physical health and vigor of its bearer. Sounds like Viconia to Lily, or even Faldorn. And there's an artifact called the Unicorn Shield, a white adamantine heavy shield emblazoned with the sign of a unicorn, especially fit for bashing shields. I see the coming of the eye. Lily wonders if Gulnan really has lost her mind. What eye? Doesn't she know we're already in the age of the beholder? By Cyric, I would speak with you. A man invoking Cyric's name, and just in case Lily didn't hear him, his armor in Tannis Bay, no less bears the symbol of the dark sun, a white, jawless skull on a purple sunrise. He is exactly who she's been looking for, though she's not sure who to thank for putting him behind bars for her. She'll at least hear his last words, though he's already been condemned. What? Or right, here's... Jared, by the black sun, how could she fell me? The snake gods are pitiful, beneath the notice of mighty Cyric. <laughs> yeah. Oh, certainly. Bully the man in the cage. How sporting. As bold as the scaled worm that seduced my flock and now takes their lives, the indignity seduced his flock, so he must have been the previous leader of this cult. Obviously of Cyric, <laughs> and Tannis Bane, no less. Yeah, Scaled Worm. Well, actually, at first I think she wants to know who he is. I am a follower of the great god Cyric. I'm a servant of the coming day of the Dark Sun. I am his will. I'm Jared, and I'm also caged like so many worthless enemies of the Prince of Lies that I've put to their end. My flock are usurped, but I shall not bow. I shall not bend. Cyric shall see to my freedom. 
Not if Lily can help it. Yeah. What did he mean by scaled worm? Treacherous snake woman. It calls itself Gulnan. I call it a serper. Syric. Why was she able to defeat me? I follow the word. Yeah. Sure enough. So it's starting again to come together. It sounds like Gulnan is probably the water Davian Yuante. Yeah. Snake beast wench. Dead if I get my hands on her. I'll make boots from her flanks. Asking where she is. In the crypts. She's using the undead. An army of corpses. I would be impressed if it was me doing it. <laughs> Alright. I think she's assuming that he's imprisoned by Golan. Yeah. She corrupted the weakest of my flock. And now the rest follow or join her legions of undead. I am to be gutted upon her altar. It's not right. Jared of Syric does the gutting. Not some scaled worm. Yeah, sacrifice to who? What indeed? Not the god of her pathetic people, whatever name such a whelp goes by. Syric would not have allowed that defeat. She cheats. She's got some power on her side, one that dares ignore my true calling. One that abuses the focus I created. Yeah, what do you mean by that? If you dare beg this knowledge at any other time, I would skin you alive. <laughs> he talks awfully boldly for somebody on the other side of prison bars. It is not for outsiders to know, but it sounds like he's about to tell Lily. I will not allow her to keep it, even if that means some pawn like you taking it from her. It's a tool, a darkly magic stone. It makes the flesh of the dead useful for things. Take it from her. It is mine by right. It is pledged to Syric, not her false lord, whatever it is. Yeah, she would never even entertain the idea of releasing him. Calling Lily an imbecile. <laughs> you should fear the will of Syric and appease him. Release his loyal servant. So my dark work in his name continues. <laughs> it sounds like he's trying to appeal to, not sure what, her sense of sympathy. Really? She'll let me out. Such an action will speak well of you and guarantee a swift, merciful death when my lord rules all. Yeah. She'll probably execute him if she can. Or demanding to be let out. Pleading. Lily's eyes narrow as her pupils shrink to tiny points of ebony. None of Syric's faithful are to be spared. None. Alright, magic missile. Lily mumbles something about having escaped justice and at any cost to Leno, who simply shrugs. Inside the cell is a cot and stool, reminding Lily of her secret bedroom back at the old Zoblob shop. 
All right. A book or a journal in service of Sirik. I think it's written by Jared. Presumably, <laughs> he's been languishing here in imprisonment. Sirik, why have you allowed me to be so weak? A conniving Yanti wench has taken our beloved focus, the altar that I constructed to show your glory. All right, that's what he's saying. Should be taken away from her. The glory of the dark sun. Now she kills what few loyalists I have left and raises them as, as undead with its power. All right, so it sounds like Gulnan could be weakened. All right, taking the altar away. Great Prince of Lies, I must smash the focus before her armor grows too great with its misuse. How dare she drag it to the depths of the Warrens. She wastes its potential on plague dead. Her scales will be plucked one by one. I will rend... <laughs> it appears, I guess. He broke his uh, writing implement at that point. Out of anger. All right. Gul'nan is spawning undead with the power of Jared's divine focus, an altar. Needless to say, it should be destroyed if Lily can find it. The Sign of the Hydra. Those born under this sign are optimistic and durable. They're natural born information gatherers and agile. Their birthstone is diamond, the stone of strength and resiliency. It Sounds like Jahira to Lily, though she's sad to be reminded of her. No matter. Or Bronwyn, even. Or even little Anu. And there's an artifact called the Ring of the Hydra. A golden ring set with nine slender, snake-like Hydra heads. Each time the ring is used to alter fate, one of the heads mounted upon it crumbles to dust. The Sign of the Chimera. Those born under this sign are suave and friendly. They're natural-born diplomats and good at moving silently. Their birthstone is amethyst, the stone of prescience, giving them a flair for stepping aside in just the nick of time. Dinah here? Or even Nalia? Lily again utters the incantations for her new spell, Find Traps. This time, not everyone's so impressed. One chest in particular is proving difficult and is still armed. It will be up to her dutiful and faithful familiar to see if he can't spring it unscathed. His mistress doesn't want to risk destroying his contents otherwise. Unscathed, he is not. There's an artifact as well, called the Bracers of the Chimera. A set of lacquered wooden bracers bearing silver inlaid etchings depicting the Chimera. They help defend the wearer from attacks and can briefly transform the wearer's forearms and head into the three heads of the Chimera. A dragon, a goat, and a lion. Or here's Gulnan's journal. Here's an excerpt. The sheep of Sirik fell swiftly. Fools. And to think their pathetic leader Jared was going to smash the older to keep its power for me. Perhaps I should just kill him. It would quell the last of his followers, although they already seek to appease me. My own sect of snake worshippers. How amusing. Soon I won't need to cower in the warrens with their precious no necromatic focus. It's an interesting device. I'll grant Jared that. I've used it to create an army of undead. I learn more about it each time I link with its power. Its pillar-like appearance disguises how fragile it truly is. 
Despite its power, I must constantly watch that my undead servants don't inadvertently damage it with their clumsy flailing. Further evidence that Gulnan is spawning undead with the power of Jared's necromatic focus, an altar. Not that Lily needed convincing that it should be destroyed. And apparently it's fragile, which helps. Or a crumpled note. Not sure who wrote it yet. I've gained much since the academy was attacked. I did not see who freed me, and I don't care. Strength has come to me strangely, quickly. There's definitely some greater power at work in Neverwinter, and it favors me this day. I've seen it in the dreams. I see the eye. Of course, we've heard about the eye. I don't know what it means, but I know this. If the Neverwinterians want me for their cure, they can carve the contribution for my corpse. So saith Golan. All right. Another key, though it looks very similar to the other key for the ancient door at the entrance. And another magic bag. Not quite as nice as the others, but useful nonetheless. The sign of the Kraken. Those born under this sign are dabblers with a plan for every eventuality. They're natural born swimmers and good at hiding. Their birthstone is aquamarine, the stone of the sea giving them a certain fluidity to their movements. Should be a dark eyes? There's even an artifact called the Kraken's Bracelet, forged of silver and crafted to resemble numerous tentacles linked together. It grants the wearer insight 